you'd be surprised at how little money you need to build wealth. Let me show you how I built my net worth to well over $100,000 in under seven years and how you can do the same in less time. Hey everyone, I'm Reggie Bryant and on this channel I help people become financially stable, build wealth, and save their first $100,000. You need to understand three things. One, the earlier you start, the better. Here's what I mean. One thing I wish I knew earlier in my financial journey was just to get started. See, my toxic trait is I love to overcomplicate everything instead of actually just getting started early. So to build wealth, we already know a few things out of the gate. One, we need money. And two, we do not need student loan debt, credit card debt, or auto loan debt. And I know that's super basic, but honestly, how many of us get started with preparing for these things? Because the thing is, I knew about debt way before I started my financial journey and not once did I look up how to avoid it completely or at least how to minimize it. And you know something about you, there's absolutely nothing right now stopping you from looking up ways to avoid and minimize debt. And this information is free. But one thing I did do very well was I realized that I needed to make money and make a respectable type of income from whatever I was doing. So I started looking up and researching high paying jobs that didn't require me to be in college for a decade. So those are a couple things that everybody knows. But some of us don't know we need our money to work for us. And some of us also don't know we need to consistently increase our income. And that's exactly why I'm here to prepare you for the reality you're facing when building wealth. You need your money to work for you. But how do you do that? There's actually a lot of ways, but the easiest way is to invest in the stock market. And that's why we have things like 401ks with match programs at our jobs. But you want to know something very important and also very interesting. You need more than that. And the crazy thing about this is the younger you start, the better your results are going to be. And I have something very exciting to show you, and it's also a very crazy story. So I want you to imagine being 30 years old and realizing that if you started investing at 16 years old when you were in high school working your first ever part-time job at Burger King, and you decided to invest $200 per month in the stock market and you got a 10% return every single year on average, you would have $70,164.26 at 30. And if you don't believe me, I'll put this on the screen for you so you can see it. This is 100% accurate. What you're looking at is an investment calculator. And the crazy thing is, that's a 14-year period where you would have given $33,600 of your own money, but it would have grown by $36,564.26. That is some of the power that I'm talking about in this video. And that's assuming you picked an investment that is going to give you an average of 10% return. And it's also assuming that you never stopped putting in $200 per month. So I'm 29. So I'm kind of talking about myself in this story that is still not done yet. But check this out. That's $70,000 down the drain for two reasons. Not getting started early and not knowing what to invest in. So what do you invest in to get a 10% return? Well, I'm not here to show you how to get 10%. I'm here to show you how to get way beyond that. In this particular story, 10% return on average is more of a pessimistic viewpoint. And here's why. You could choose to invest into something like VOO, which I talk about a lot on this channel, and I've been a longtime investor in VOO. And this is not financial advice. I'm just telling you what VOO has done for me and my finances. But to put it in perspective, VOO has averaged 40.39% per year over the last 14 years as of today, which is October 13th, 2024. So now again, imagine being 30. Guess what you would have missed out on from not investing into VOO for the last 14 years. And this is the same $200 per month that you would have been investing in the first example. This is what you would have missed out on, and I'm putting it right on the screen for you. $798,847.21. That is correct. Over that course of 14 years, again, you would have put in $33,600, but you would have gained $765,247.21. And that's with starting at $0. Still think it takes a lot of money to build wealth? No, it doesn't. It just takes consistency of saving money and then putting money into the right investments over time. That's all it takes. But you know the crazy thing about this? When you're already 30, when you're already 25 years old, 
and you haven't taken any of these steps yet and you have real life responsibilities and bills, it's going to seem like you're at a disadvantage and like you can't put this money away to save much less than best. And I know because that's exactly how I felt. But you won't feel like that for long if you do the second thing and that's plan ahead for everything. I want you to take some notes down for this part of the video because I'm about to save you some years of frustration and heartache. I'm going to have this on the screen for you, so make sure you screenshot these. And if you have an iPhone, once you do take the screenshot, you can actually copy and paste what, what I put up there and put it into your own notes app. That way you can add whatever you want to. But check this out. You need to save money, build an emergency fund, keep your credit score at zero, invest in a 401k, invest in a Roth IRA, and have money for your basic needs consistently which means your checking account and your savings account needs to have money in it at all times. Now I'm gonna make some assumptions about you. You want to buy a house, buy a nicer car, buy nice things for yourself every now and then, get married, and go out on nice trips every now and then. If these describe you, I want you to raise your hand in the comments. Plan ahead for these. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you the answer to all these things because Fundamentally, a lot of us already know these things. You might have even watched this just now and said, I already know this. But what we don't know is what it takes to reach all of these things in a timely manner. So I'm going to help you with that right now because I don't want you to be taken forever to reach these goals. So check this out. On the screen, you will see the minimum amount of money you need for each thing I said. So for saving money, and again, screenshot this, for saving money, $1,000. Build an emergency fund you want at least one month worth of expenses. Keep your credit card debt to zero. That is the minimum. Keep it at zero. You need to invest in the 401k, which means at least contribute up to the point where your employer matches you. And what that looks like is this. We have a matching program. We match you once you contribute 5% of your paychecks. We'll throw in an extra 50 cents for every dollar you put in. We're going to pay you free money. That's what it sounds like. And you need to have money for your basic needs consistently, which means you need to have at least $500 left at the end of the month after you've been paid. That's the blueprint. Now what I want you to do is plan your life around that and see how it looks for you because it's going to look a little different for everybody. And I do actually have a link in the description for you. It's a very special thing that I made for you. It's called the $100,000 Action Plan, and it's a template that I made specifically for you to reach all your goals and everything that I'm talking about in this video right now. So that's there for you in the description if you want to grab it. Now here is the cherry on top. This is the game-changing piece of advice that you probably clicked on this video for without realizing it. Track your expenses weekly, not monthly. Most of the clients that I've sat down with and have given financial coaching to have been their own worst enemies. Not their circumstances, but themselves. So let that sink in. And by the way, if you do want some financial coaching, I do have a link for that in the description for you. But anyway, this is how you avoid overspending money on that BS by tracking your finances weekly, not monthly. We're going to go into an example real quick. But first, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. You just divide your monthly budget by the amount of days in the month that you're in. So it's going to be a little different for every month. And then you multiply that number by seven. So let me give you an example because I'm not about to just make this super complicated for you. I'm going to have examples on the screen for you. So this can be as easy and simple as possible. So you can put this into action right after you finish this video. For easy math, let's say your budget is $5,000 per month. So we're going to divide $5,000 by the amount of days in the month. And this month happens to be October. So we're going to divide $5,000 by 31 days. That's $161.29. So if we multiply that number by seven, we get $1,129.03 per week that we're allowed to spend. And if you're wondering, Reggie, why didn't you just divide $5,000 by four? Because there's four weeks in a month. Well, if you did that, you'd actually end up with $1,250 that you're allowed to spend per week. The problem with that is the average month has more than four weeks because four weeks is only 28 days. So, for example, if we did measure it like that and it was a 31 day month, but we measured it as if it was a 28 day month, you would have spent $500 over your original budget, which is more than enough to knock the average person into the negatives in their bank account. 
So again, to avoid overspending on that BS, you wanna follow this guide exactly as I'm saying it. Because even being a few days off, you will overspend because you will think that you're allowed to spend more than what you're really allowed to spend based on the amount of money you have left. This is the level of detail you need to reach in order to take full control of your personal finances. And it's gonna suck at first, but you know what else sucks? Not being financially stable, not being able to pay your bills, not being able to invest and watch your money grow, and not being able to get yourself, your significant other, or your entire family the things that they want, need, and deserve. That's what sucks. But you know the crazy thing, if you just set this up one time, you don't really need to set it up again unless you get like a raise or promotion and you just need to readjust a few numbers. But besides that, you set this up one time and you're good to go. Since you're still here, I do have a bonus tip for you and this will change the game even more if you follow this as well. The longer you delay getting started, the longer you delay achieving the desired result. And I actually made a really good video on how to achieve the desired result and you can check it out right here. It's gonna pop up on the screen here in a second.